Muse for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, Musers? John with Muse for you here to help you build awesome websites without code. And welcome to the weekly update for the week of March 19th through March 25th. So this week, uh, I've worked on a few things. So the first thing I've worked on is an update to the advanced gradient widget. I've released the audio visualizer set, and I've also released the video tutorial for the restaurant template. So the first thing I'll go over is the update to the advanced gradient widget. So here I'll head over to museforyoushop.com. And here you can click subscribe today. And here you can click subscribe now to get access to all widgets and templates I come out with for 39 a year. I'll scroll down to the advanced gradients widget, which is right down here. Uh, it's right here, the advanced gradients widget. Uh, so here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and templates I come out with for 39 a year. So the update, it's now advanced gradients widget 1.2. And the new updates are that the widgets without a graphic style name can now be responsive in width and height via the resize option in Adobe Muse. Um, there's now a new CSS gradient, gradient generator reference within the widget as well. Um, and it's cssgradient.io. So it's this really cool CSS gradient generator and I'll showcase how to use within Adobe Muse. Uh, so here I'll go into Muse. I'll go to the library panel. And if you don't see the library panel, you can go to window and click on library. And here I'll type in advanced gradients and I'll bring in the advanced gradients without the graphic style name. So here I'll click, hold and drag, place into Adobe Muse. And initially we see it's just blank. Um, this widget container is just blank, uh, but I'll open the widget options. I'll click on gradient generator. So I'll click there and here I can just create a gradient. Um, it's really useful. It's very similar to creating, creating gradients and let's say, you know, a Photoshop or an illustrator. You can just create your gradient. They have a few presets down here. Um, you can select all your colors and everything like that. So you can add uh, markers here and add different colors for, for the gradients. All right, so this is the gradient generator. You can do a linear, linear gradient or a radial gradient. You can set the gradient angle right over here and it looks good. So once you're happy with the gradient um, and you can change colors here and the stop positions as well, you can uh, delete colors and things like that. It's all uh, within this gradient generator. And uh, once you have your gradient and you're happy with your gradient, uh, you can just click here where it says copy to clipboard. So I'll click there and then I'll go into the widget and I'll just paste that right in there. I can right click and paste or hold down command V to paste. And just like that, we have that gradient within the widget container and I can you know, stretch to browser width uh, set it to responsive width, responsive width and height, or stretch to browser width. So with the new update, um, you can now set it to responsive width and height. So here I'll just make this a little bit larger. And then I'll go to the resize option and I'll set it to responsive width and height. So now if I preview in the browser and I resize, we can see that the element is now responsive in width and height. So before you would have to use the graphic style widget where you'd have to create you know, a, a rectangle within Muse, and then use the the graphic style option. So, you know, you'd have to assign a graphic style name like gradient one, and I'm kind of doing it in a, in a reverse order. Um, and then you'd bring in the advanced gradients graphic style, and you could paste that code. Let me copy to clipboard. So you could paste that code in here and then you could set this to responsive width and height and it would have the similar effect. So we can see that there, but now you can work with the, the advanced gradients widget here and kind of see how, how the gradient will look as you're working on the site. So that's a new update. If you did want it to be responsive and width and height, you can now do that for the widgets that don't have the graphic style name. And you can do that with the two colors as well. Um, you can now set the two colors to responsive width and height and the border, you can set that to width and height as well. Responsive width and height here in the resize option. All right, and I'll preview in the browser. And there we go. So the elements are now responsive in width and height. 
So that is the new update to the advanced gradients widget. Uh, we're now using this website here, cssgradient.io. Um, it's just a little bit more, uh, more simple. Um, it's easy to kind of work with these options. You can set the angle, set it to radial or linear, and work with the different colors and the stops here as well. You could also upload an image and it would extract the colors from the image to create a gradient. Um, so that's the new gradient reference and you can now set the, the widgets without graphic style names. You can set them to responsive width and height. Um, it just makes designing in Adobe Muse uh, a bit easier. All right, so that is the advanced gradients widget. Um, that is the first thing for the weekly update. Uh, the next thing I'll go over is the audio visualizer set. So this widget is a lot of fun. Uh, you can choose from five different customizable uh, audio visualizers and I'll go ahead and preview. I'll just turn down the volume here a bit. So we have five different audio visualizers and I'll just showcase them really quick. And then I'll just uh, show an example in Adobe Muse. So that's the first one. Then we have the second one. Looks good. We have the third one. This one's a lot of fun. And when the user interacts with the audio visualizer, elements change on the audio visualizer. You can pause and play here with a pause and play button. Okay, that's the third one. Then we have the fourth one. So this one's really interesting as well. You can change all the colors for the audio visualizer. And here I'll go to the last one here. This is the fifth audio visualizer. So if you're a musician or you just wanna showcase music on your site in a, in a really cool way, um, you can do, do that with the audio visualizer set. All right, so that's the audio visualizer set. And I'll quickly showcase it in Muse. Um, I'll read the features included. Um, you can add an mp3 file for the audio. You can place the audio visualizer above the page. You can have the audio visualizer fixed in the browser. You can add a play and pause button. You can have the audio muted initially. Uh, you can add a background image for browsers that do not support an audio visualizer. You can set the background color for the audio visualizer. You can set the stroke weight for the bass, mids, and treble. You can change the colors for the bass, mids, and treble. On tablet and mobile devices, the audio visualizer will start when the user taps on the device and you can disable the audio visualizer at a specific breakpoint. All right, and Internet Explorer browsers do not support audio visualizers, so the initial background image will be shown instead. And here we have a few images of the widget options, the community section if you had any questions about the widget, and the preview page. Uh, so I'll go ahead and quickly showcase this in Adobe Muse. So I'll just type in audio visualizer, and here we can choose from five different audio visualizers. So here I'll bring in number five, I'll click hold and drag. Here we have the widget options. Um, so here I'll just click on add file for the audio and I'll just select an audio. And it's just that simple. Um, you can have it above the page so it would be above all the content on your page. Um, you can have it also fixed in browser. I'm just gonna have it fixed in browser so it's just, it just fills the entire browser and stays fixed within the browser. Um, so that's basically it. Um, you would want to add an initial background image for Internet Explorer browsers and just to show an image before the audio visualizer starts. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and preview and we'll see how it looks. So I'll go ahead and preview in the browser. And just like that, you have an audio visualizer. So it's just that easy. Um, just add an audio, you drag and drop the widget, add an audio and add an initial image. All right, looks good. And I could use the browser centering widget. So let me close this here. So I can bring in the browser centering and I could add some text. So I'll add some text here. I'll just say audio visualizer set and we'll make it, um, we'll just choose a font here and I'll use this here and I'll make it white, make it a bit larger, center it and we'll do something like this, and I'll place it right up here. And I'll change the background to black, and I'll give this a graphic style name, Center 1. So here I have the Graphic Styles panel. If you don't see the Graphic Styles panel, you can go to Window and click on Graphic Styles. Okay, so I'll create a new Graphic Style, and call this 
center one. All right, so the elements at the top, and now if I preview, we have the text in the center and the audio visualizer in the back. All right, so it's just that simple. Um, so I'll go over the widget options really quick. So here I'll open the widget options. So here you can enable a play and pause button. Uh, so if you click here, you will want an element with the play button graphic style name applied to it. So if I create an element here, and actually I'll showcase it. If that option is enabled and you preview, um, it actually won't play because it's looking for a play and pause button. So if you do have it enabled, you wanna select an element and give it the graphic style name, play. So now I'll go ahead and preview. Now it'll work and if I click, it'll pause it. And if I click again, it'll play it. So you can drag and drop any element and have it be your play and pause button. And then you can have it paused initially if you have a play and pause button. Here in the background section, you can add the initial background image. So if I click add file, um, within the widget folder, there's a few initial images, but you can add your own custom initial image. And it looks good. You can change the background color. So I could do something interesting here. Um, it might look a little strange, but I'll change it just for demonstration purposes. And I'll go ahead and preview. We can see the background's changed. So we noticed it was black initially. That's the initial background image. Um, but you can set any color for the background image. All right, and then here we have the base. So you can set the stroke weight and the base color for the audio visualizer. Same with the mids and the treble. All right, so that would just make it look a bit different. You know, you can change the color and thickness of the stroke. And then you can disable the audio visualizer at a specific breakpoint. If it's left at zero, then it'll play across all breakpoints. But if I were to say something like 480 and I preview, so it'll play once it's greater than 480. But here I'm at the 480 breakpoint. We notice there's no audio visualizer. All right, and I'm just gonna delete this element here and um, un uncheck the play and pause button and I'll change the color back here to that darker color. Okay, so that is the audio visualizer set. Um, I will be making another video tutorial that goes more in depth, uh, but that's basically it. You can just drag and drop, add an audio file, add an initial background image, and you're good to go. All right, looks good. And you can have it above the page or fixed within the browser. All right, looks good. So that was the second thing for the weekly update. And the last thing was that I created a video tutorial for the restaurant template, uh, which is right here. And I'll actually place the video tutorial here, uh, but it's just a really great template if you're a restaurant owner. It has a really interesting navigation, um, a nice menu, it has video. Um, you can replace the video if you'd like, um, but yeah, it's just a really nice uh, website and template here. So in the tutorial, I go over, you know, the different pages in Adobe Muse and kind of the different features of the template. All right, so that is it for this weekly update. So again, I've updated the Advanced Gradients widget. It is now Advanced Gradients 1.2. I released the audio visualizer set, uh, so you can choose from five different audio visualizers. And I will be creating another video tutorial to go more in depth on how to use the widget. And I've also released the video tutorial for the restaurant template and I'll leave a link in the show more section below. Uh, so that's it for this weekly update. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. News for you, awesome websites without code.